um lado, uma empresa privada decidida a investir em arte, com o projeto de um empreendimento que unisse um hotel e um museu ao ar livre. De outro, Victoria Lu, uma respeitadíssima curadora e também crítica de arte, a primeira na China. Visionária, ousada e empreendedora. Os caminhos se cruzaram e surgiu o conceito do Art Resort, que o Almanac foi conhecer perto de Pequim. Nossa guia foi a própria Victoria Lu. No roteiro, uma visão surpreendente da arte na China e dos próprios chineses. First, I would like to uh, understand the concept of an art resort or an art hotel. Yeah, this is uh, actually a development project and started with the hotel first, then the residential apartment housing here. And starting from this year, we are building this, you can see the art plaza and the art boulevard. And this art boulevard leading to the future Mon River Contemporary Art Museum. Then in front of the art museum is the art plaza again. So we are doing annual program with this so-called Mon River Sculpture Festival. So in every May, we will do this sculpture festival. In the fall, we'll start doing the Asian art festival. How did the concept come to life? Uh, because of me. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, in, in Beijing, you know, the, um, we have 798, Cao Changdi, and many art districts. But we never see any place like this because we are on the spot of the beginning of Grand Canal. So we are embraced by two rivers. And you know Beijing is, is a metropolitan city. And you rarely see a place that's with so many tree and river bend. So we are building a sculpture park and going to be the largest in China. Was it a hard idea to sell? Uh, not really. And I think um, Beijing became the center for Asian culture. So for Beijing to have a sculpture park that, like this, we've been waiting for too long. So it's going to build to be the biggest sculpture park in China. So this is the ongoing, and this time we have 105 artists participate. This is actually my 30th anniversary being a curator. I started in 1978 in Los Angeles, and uh, actually I'm American citizen. <laughs> I was born in Taiwan, and my parents were original from Shanghai. So this is like a homecoming for me. And um, I have been a curator for 30 years, so I have a huge database. And uh, so it's easy for me to find a proper artist for this kind of project. How are the Chinese interested in Chinese contemporary art? Uh, right now, Chinese contemporary art is very hot. It's hot, not just in China, internationally. So you can see the, the, the whole Beijing. Um, we now have almost more than 10 art districts. More than 10 now. It's starting with... Um, uh, 798, but now uh, more than 10. And near here, we are Mon River, and near here there's another art village called Songzhuang, five minutes away, and a big community as well. So you know, you know, Chinese people all just love art and love culture. Yeah, I mean, everywhere you walk in here, you see a different uh, kind of art. My question is, how Exactly. You said it's easy for you, but it can't be that simple to decide what goes where and where it comes from. Um, this, this year, the Sculpture Festival is uh, Chinese artists only. And next year will be international. So um, those artists that I invite, some of them are very famous in China. And particular one like here uh, is young artists, emerging artists that who are uh, still uh, for Tai Lei here and uh, Wang Haipo, they're still student um, in the uh, sculpture uh, graduate school. Do people look for you or you go after them? Uh, both. <laughs> because I'm known uh, to help the young artists. <clears throat> so many, many young artists will come to me. Many uh, young artists send their portfolio to me, some send email to me. And so I receive um, 
information almost on a daily basis. And uh, it's important that I'm, I'm willing to help the young artists because uh, in China, uh, for one art school, they may en enroll 4,000 students each year. So we have great number of uh, students that graduate every year and they are looking for opportunity to participate. So I have wide open door for all of them. So I'm known for that. Is this something you always thought of doing? Is it something that grew and then became real? Um, I started a stage one gallery in Los Angeles, 1978. That's how I start my curatorial uh, profession and uh, career. And at the time, I named uh, the gallery stage one. That means that I will help artists to start their first stage. So starting from 30 years ago, I'm helping. Helping the young artists then in Los Angeles, now in Beijing, Shanghai, you know, in China. But something as big as this, how did you, how did you get so big? How did you get so important? If I tell you, I only spent three years, uh, three months. I only spent three months to curate this whole project. People thought I'm I'm crazy, and I is that right? Yeah, I only only spent three months to curate this whole project. Some of the pieces was commissioned, like the the one there you see. How do you decide w what goes where? Uh, outdoor is our chairman, um, my boss. Uh, his name is Chi Chun Shen. He's only 42 years old. He owns this whole thing. And he decided outdoor pieces, where it goes. So I decide where it goes for the indoor pieces. Uh -huh. <laughs> so this is his idea. So this is one of the uh, yeah, permanent? one of uh, permanent collection uh -huh. pieces. And in Chinese, we say wen si quan yong. That means you, if you're a writer, you need some imagination and come out like a river. <laughs> so that's what it means. Uh -huh. Is there a Victoria Lu style? Uh, this is my style because I create this uh, theory of anime mix. It's animation plus comics. I make the new word anime mix, and I'm kind of predict that the tw the twenty first the men idea of uh, cr new creation is anime mix like the ab abstraction in the 21st uh, 20th century mainly abstract art so the 21st century will be anime mix art we hide inside there <laughs> so this is one of the space that uh, uh, the whole row um, on the ground floor it's art artist studios, and this is one of the studio projects. Um, the curator for this show is Zhang Xiaodong. Um, he is currently in Japan <laughs> right now, and he curated this show and uh, invite artists from Japan, for example, and some Korean artists and Taiwan artists and Chinese Chinese artists as well. So this is. Uh, uh, show that change like uh, every two three months. Just so we uh, understand, how big is this? What are we talking about? Uh, we are looking at uh, seven hundred thousand square meter land, and uh, so we have uh, this whole rose uh, artist studio space. Um, this one particular one called called Group Joy, and. Uh, it's led by Professor Zhang Xiaodong. And this is his work here, Zhang Xiaodong's work. And so he is, um, also you see this is so-called animemic style. And I have found um, many artists today, internationally, especially the young generation, they are making this sort of art, not for animation film or comic books, but this is their art style. So in 20th century, you see many artists, designers, they do things in the abstract way. So in the future, in the 21st century, people will make art in the animimics way.
And this is ceramic, ceramic flowers. And this is made of cotton. Like the cloud and changing into fish shape. And you see many ships on the bed. <laughs> Are you allowed to have a favorite uh, artist? Oh, I will show you. It's, I'm hiding her here. So let's make a venture together. Let's go. <laughs> OK. <laughs> and that artist, Yang Na, is who you asked, uh, who I love the most. And her studio is here, but supposed to be secret, but I'm going to lead you there. And uh, Yang Na is a young artist, and she's very beautiful. And herself, uh, when she was in college, she was a model, modeling for part-time job. And now she's internationally kind of so after the upcoming star and nobody know where is her studio but i'm hiding her here that's her piece yeah this is yang na's piece again and yang na's boyfriend uh, he's mu lei so this is yang na mu lei paints and yang na paints this fictional nana so this is Yang Na and this is Na Na. We can go upstairs. This is uh, Xiang Ding Dang, an mimic sculpture. And uh, Gao Lei, also another young artist, uh, mainly photographer. It's a cloud, mushroom cloud. And you can see we, this time we have very large sculpture outdoor and the huge man when we enter the building. And you will see miniature like this. Little girl, <laughs> a miniature piece. Internationally, very well known, Fang Li Jun's work. Fang Li Jun is known as a painter, but this is his uh, sculptural pieces. Um, it's like an installation. And um, the old days, um, Chinese apartment, um, very small apartment may squeeze in one or two families. So, this is very similar to that kind of living situation, but more ironic in a dramatic way. So, big famous Fang Li Jun's work. Not and many people, I'm sorry. Uh, another famous sculptor, Shi Jing Song, and he handmade the pieces. It took a few months to make one single piece, and uh, he modeled this uh, with her daughter, newly born daughter. So every year, this is the year of uh, mouse, um, you know, the mice, mouse. And uh, so this year he made this piece and at the time her daughter can fit in. And he has another piece, the year of pig. And so every year yeah, he make a piece for her daughter, his daughter, for his daughter. And uh, so eventually the piece will grow, you know, every year with 12 animal sign. So this piece of his daughter's costume will be made every year annually until I think 12 animals will be finished as a series.
What is he doing down there exactly? Why is he? Yeah. And uh, I'm a female curator. And there were one male artist visit the show, and uh, all of a sudden he said, you have a big problem with our mankind, <laughs> because you make all the women so glorified, you know, so beautiful, so wonderful, and you make our men hiding there. <laughs> you are the first, you are the first female critic and creator in China for uh, contemporary art. What does that tell you? Uh, I started my career so early, you know, and so I am actually, yeah, indeed the first uh, art critic and the first curator in Chinese contemporary art as a female person. And still today, uh, the Chinese community, uh, especially in the art community, it's very macho, you know, men still hold all the power. And I'm one of the few women that can participate. But even in art, um, I mean, in art shouldn't be such a men thing. Especially in art. I think politically, um, women now has many important positions. You will see many women mayors now. Um, but in the art, um, still pretty much men's job. I still can't believe you did this in three months. Yeah, and no one believed. And even I was kind of wondering whether I can make it. Um, but it, it's something uh, the boss wants, so I have to finish um, and make the show within the month of May because it's a May festival. So at the beginning, I was really very worried, but at this point, you can see the outcome, and I'm very proud of it. And in China, you can see that a building will take five years to build in other countries, but in China, it may take only two years. So. Um, I was born in Taiwan and grew up outside, and I studied in Belgium and uh, immigrant to U.S. So for me, um, I travel intensively internationally. I can see that uh, China is miracle land. Sometimes I could not understand, you know, how things can happen, but it does happen according to the plan, like the Olympic. You know, this is the Chinese. Um, mysterious power, you know, it's the mystery. And maybe people work harder. Uh, maybe people, when they determine to do something, they're willing to sacrifice. So for the outsider, kind of it's kind of difficult to understand how people willing, willingly, okay, to work 24 hours a day, as long as somebody pay for. So people do not understand and they yelling for human rights. And uh, only I'm here, I understand. This is deep inside within our body, it was within our soul. Um, we like to be successful. It's the Chinese thinking. We want to make our children to have a better environment. And so the Chinese parents put a lot of emphasis on, in education. So this is a mystery power inside us that we want to achieve a better life. And so we willingly to work harder, uh, to work longer hours, to make more money, <laughs> to become rich. I think it's, it's, it's people's power right now. You know, it's everybody's will in China to become rich. So everybody is willing to work harder in China. That's how the miracle comes. And uh, I kind of enjoy it, you know. When I used to live in Los Angeles in California, I believed that I work eight hours, that's long hour. I need time for my enjoyment and leisure time. But here I start working like 16 hours, you know, 18 hours a day, that's normal. I think the world used to be determined by the European and American. Um, now I think the whole world is changing. Brazil become a very important source of imagination and econo economical power, and the r the rise of uh, Asian countries like the Indian artists nowadays is very important internationally, and so I think 
the power is shifting from the traditional European power to the traditional American power, the Northern American power. It will shift to Southern <laughs> American power and uh, shifting to Asian power. So the world is not fixed. So because I'm from Asia, so I'm more open-minded because I'm not the mainstream. Face it. So I'm more open to new art, new movement, and I'm traveling every month to a new country, and eventually I will travel all over the world. I'm more willingly to do that. But if you, you, you are in an all-power city, you are thinking you are, you are the head of the world. You're sitting on the top of the world. So you're not willing to see other part of the world. But we are at the marginal place. So we're more willing to discover the world. And this helped us and educated us to become more powerful. And I think the Asian curators are all like me. And we are more knowledgeable internationally than many of our colleagues in the West because they think they are more important and we are not. So we are learning and hopefully quickly. Thank you.